Hello and welcome to FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the City of Greensboro. The City's Planning Department will host Majora Carter. She's an urban revitalization strategist and Peabody award-winning broadcaster. This is part of Planet GSO's series of public conversations about how Greensboro should grow and develop in the next 20 years. Carter founded the nonprofit workforce development organization Sustainable South Bronx, where she deployed MIT's first ever digital fabrication laboratory, an early iteration of the maker spaces we have today. Carter will give two talks about how talent retention strategies in low status communities can drive prosperity from within. The afternoon presentation on Monday, November 5th will be a lunch and learn from 12 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. at the public located at 433 Spring Garden Street. Admission is $12, which includes lunch. Online registration is required. The evening presentation is free and will start at 5.30 p.m. and will take place at the Greensboro History Museum located downtown at 130 Summit Avenue. Planet GSO collects public input to help update its 15-year-old comprehensive plan, which guides the city's future growth. For more information about speakers series, call Russ Clegg in the Planning Department at 336-373-2211. Approximately 60 invasive honeysuckle shrubs will be removed from the entrance to the Bog Garden as part of an ongoing effort to remove invasive plants from the garden and replace them with native plants which better support wildlife. Recently, residents took part in a community conversation to learn more about the Bog Garden Management Plan. The Bog Garden is a partnership between Parks and Recreation and the nonprofit Greensboro Beautiful, whose volunteers help enhance and maintain public gardens. In November 2017, volunteers and city staff launched a long-term project to remove and replace invasive plants for the benefit of the local ecosystem. As of August of this year, volunteers have planted nearly 1,500 native plants representing 59 different species. More information about this project and its benefits to the garden can be found on the Greensboro Beautiful website. The city of Greensboro will be flooded with yellow and blue as North Carolina A&T shows its Aggie pride during homecoming weekend. The Aggie Fan Festival will take place November 2nd through November 4th at the historic War Memorial Stadium located at 510 Yanceyville Street. The Greensboro Parks and Recreation Special Events Office continues to make this annual event one of the top festivals in the triad. North Carolina A&T Aggie Fan Fest is the largest city-managed special event in Greensboro, entertaining more than 50,000 people during North Carolina A&T State University's homecoming weekend. This year, the festival producers have added more family-friendly entertainment. Fan Fest hours go into the evening on Friday and Saturday, wrapping up in the afternoon on Sunday. The festivities will include various musical performances and a visit from the North Carolina A&T Marching Band, made possible by WNAA 90.1 The Voice. Aggie Fan Fest also features more than 100 vendors of art, food, and fashions. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. When it comes to healthy eating, small changes can make a big impact on your health. Do you know what they are? Instead of using white refined flour for your baked goods, breads, and breakfast foods like pancakes and waffles, would be using whole wheat flour. It's going to have more fiber, which, which keeps you fuller and more satisfied, and it's going to have more minerals and vitamins as well. To add on to that, you can incorporate dried oats or flaxseed meal, hemp seed, chia seed. All of those are going to provide the same benefits, and you can use them in place of breadcrumbs. For your baked goods, in place of chocolate chips or candies, try dried fruits like these dried apricots, Dried cranberries or raisins could be used as well, or you could use nuts like walnuts, almonds, or pecans. Instead of butter, shortening, or animal fat, try heart healthy oil. You can use olive oil, vegetable oil, sesame oil, there's many out there on the market. 
It's specifically for baking though, you could replace the butter, shortening, or oil with an even lower calorie option that adds a hint of sweetness by using mashed bananas or unsweetened applesauce. Instead of using salt, experiment with herbs and spices for flavor. Uh, many of us mindlessly add salt to foods before we even taste them, and herbs and spices will open up a whole new world of options. Many of them have great health qualities that promote long life and well-being. Mindfulness can be used in many different aspects of your life. For mindful eating, this means paying attention to what is going into your body, what is on your plate, how it tastes, how it smells, where it came from, and practicing mindful eating can get you better at listening to those hunger and fullness cues your body is giving you. Here are some tips to help you get started. Turn off the TV and other distractions. Research shows you eat about 14% more when you're watching TV while eating. Same thing goes for eating in front of your desk at work, checking emails, multitasking, eating in the car when driving, or with your phone or tablet in front of you at the dinner table. So put away the distractions and focus on what is on your plate. Savor that first bite. Eating really is meant to be an experience. Savoring your first bite is going to help you get more enjoyment and satisfaction out of your meal and snack time. This means you have to take your food and put it on a plate or in a bowl where you can see it. No eating out of the box or out of the bag. You're going to eat more that way. Slow down when eating. If we're eating quickly, it does not give our stomach time to send the signals to our brain that we're full and we often end up overeating. By slowing down, we can again get those hunger and fullness cues more clearly. And you can do this by putting your fork down between bites, sipping water between bites, and aiming for meals to last between 20 and 30 minutes. So I hope you got some great ideas for our healthy alternatives that you can use this year. For more information, visit conehealth.com slash healthy eating. I'm Kate Watts. The leaves are starting to fall slowly but surely. The city is prepared to collect the leaves after you pile them up. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. This year, many Greensboro residents learned the hard way that easy access to vital documents such as insurance policies, birth certificates, and car titles is crucial during post-emergency situations. That's why Housing Consultants Group, a partner member of the Storm Recovery Alliance with the City of Greensboro, is offering to scan your vital documents onto a flash drive on two days in November. The flash drive events are free to anyone who experienced reportable damage either during April's tornado, Hurricane Florence, or Tropical Storm Michael. The cost to all other residents is $10. Flash drives will be provided to each family for their document storage. The events take place from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Thursday, November 8th, and from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, November 10th at the Greensboro Housing Hub located at 1031 Summit Avenue, second floor learning lab. Registration is preferred but not mandatory. All documents will be scanned face down in front of you and all scans will be deleted as soon as they are saved onto a flash drive which will be given to you immediately. For more information about these events, call the Housing Consultants Group at 336-553-0946. If your yard turns into a blanket of leaves, the city's annual loose leaf collection program will kick off on November 13th. The first round of collection is scheduled through December 22nd. If you don't gather your leaves before December 22nd, the trucks will make the rounds again from December 27th through January 25th. You can visit the city's website to access the interactive map that will show where your neighborhood falls on the pickup schedule. Meantime, the city offers the following tips for a successful loose leaf collection season. Rake leaves to the edge of your yard behind the curb, not in the street or on the sidewalk. Remove sticks, rocks and any other debris that may damage city equipment and do not park vehicles on, in front of or near piles of leaves. The city also offers a yard waste program to dispose of leaves throughout the year. 
Residents can place leaves in clear plastic bags or in a plastic or metal garbage can and set them at the curb on regular trash collection days. The collected leaves are converted into compost to fertilize city gardens and landscaped areas. If the landscape in your yard could also benefit from the compost, it's sold at the White Street Landfill located at 2503 White Street. Overnight temperatures are starting to create a chill in the air. This is the time of year when the city thinks about the safety and well-being of our homeless population. Operation Bedroll is a collaboration between GPD, field operations, and the library in an effort to keep non-recyclable materials out of the landfill while providing the homeless with a mat to sleep on this winter. The bed rolls provide an insulating layer to prevent the loss of body heat for someone who sleeps outdoors. Greensboro's residential recycling program does not accept plastic bags, which can get tangled in sorting machines at the recycling center. Residents may recycle plastic bags and other plastic wrap or film items at participating local retailers such as grocery stores. All materials must be clean, dry, and free of food residue prior to being recycled. In an effort to spotlight and celebrate local artists, business owners, community builders, and essentially the next generation of leaders, the city is proud to partner with Action Greensboro to introduce our Made in Greensboro series. This day, we place the spotlight on Irving Allen, organizer of Movements for Social Change. According to Irving Allen, young people are the only reason anything has changed in this country ever. Irving's uncle, David Richmond, was one of the A&T Four, a group of students who launched the lunch counter sit-in protest in Greensboro in the 1960s. Irving's father, Steve Allen, was a civil rights attorney and the first black superior court judge in Guilford County. His parents and other black families banded together to grow a neighborhood in Pleasant Garden. But Irving is blazing his own path as a new generation leader working to improve his community. Allen is the Triad Regional Coordinator of Ignite NC, an organization dedicated to building the leadership and power of young people to fight for social change. He also leads the Gate City Black Lives Matter group, which he and others use to organize social movements in Greensboro. He organizes meetings, marches, and concerts. Irving says his role is to use his relationships and the way people view him, whether it's through his family or the history of the work he's done or the people he's worked with, to get resources to people who don't have them. To learn more about Made in Greensboro or to see more images taken by photographers Jerry Walford and Scott Mothersbaugh, visit the Action Greensboro website at madeingso.com. The City of Greensboro has an award-winning public speaker on the employee roster. Coming up after the break, we'll introduce you to the man who competed on the world stage for Toastmasters. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The competition field started with thousands of Toastmasters who entered the 2018 International Convention that took place in Chicago back in August. The number of contenders dwindled from 32,000 down to the top 10 for the World Semifinals. Joining me now to tell us about his experience of speaking on a world stage in front of 2,500 people is Kevin Johnson. He is a member of Toastmasters and works for the city's transportation department. Hello, Kevin. Welcome to the show. Hey, Carla. So congratulations again. We are so proud of you for what you've accomplished. What does it mean to be the regional semifinal winner? For me, it means, uh, it means I'm Googleable now, <laughs> if that makes sense. Say that you, if you Google Kevin Johnson Toastmaster, I'm the first face that pops up, and um, it's a 
It's an overwhelming experience, it really is. You actually had to go to Charlotte to become the regional semifinalist. Yes, yes. So okay. tell me about that. Okay, so Charlotte, when I went to Charlotte, it was, immediately when I walked in the room, that's when things started getting real because I didn't realize I was in this big of a competition. And immediately when I walked in the room, I realized I wasn't supposed to be there. And I was highly surprised when I won and it put me on the road to Chicago. Okay, and speaking of which, did you envision being in the World Championship Finals when you initially said, I think I'll sign up for Toastmasters? No, had, had no clue. As a matter of fact, I was watching on YouTube. I didn't even know Toastmasters existed. I was watching on YouTube a uh, video of the World Championship Public Speaking. And a month later, the city sent out an email that said, inviting people to join a club called Toastmasters. So I decided, yeah, I'll give it a shot. And I joined and gave my icebreaker speech, which is your first speech. And uh, I think I was the only one that spoke that day. And a lady approached me, Sharon Hill, she approached me afterwards and said, you need to enter that speech in a competition. I, I didn't really pay any attention to it. Uh, a few months later, she came in looking for volunteers. I still didn't volunteer. A lot of people were volunteering within the club. And she nudged me and said, put that speech in the competition. I said, all right. So I put it in, and here we are. Yes, well, I am one of your fellow Toastmasters. I've heard that speech, and you're essentially telling a story about yourself and just some obstacles that you've overcome, and it inspires anyone who feels like the underdog in life. Correct. It's, and, and that's what's been the most, the whole story is kind of a, it's an underdog situation even getting into the competition because a lot of the people once you get to the state level and the semifinal level and definitely the world level a lot of those people have been doing it for years and uh, yeah, you look at yourself and you're like what in the world am I doing here I work on traffic lights so it was a pretty this you were living the story as you were giving it so it just got more and more momentum as, you, as it got through the competition. And in Chicago can you give us a glimpse of what it was like to be on the stage with such a huge audience? It felt, I had to have a new speech, I had to write a new speech. So the one I was working on, had been working on, I had to do everything and all that had to take place in 24 hours because I didn't expect I was going to be there. And I walked out on that stage and uh, the thing that's different about a crowd that big is people don't laugh, they roar. And you don't see faces, you just see, uh, just heads throughout the audience except for the front row on the front row it was all those world champions that i've been watching in videos they were sitting there with notepads a pencil and paper and uh it, it, it's so nerve-wracking it feels like jumping out of a plane and not knowing if you packed a parachute or a sandwich <laughs> well i feel like you have done well and i'm curious to know since you've been in toastmasters now just a little bit over a year what impact has it had on you as far as your work or just what impact has your speech had on others? Have they shared that with you? When it comes to work, it's, it's helped me communicate. Uh, I've, I feel fairly comfortable communicating, but it's, it's, it's given me just a, a, I don't know, a reassurance on a skill. And not only that, but with others, you connect in Toastmasters with people. For, me and you, you and I met in Toastmasters and vice versa. You have managers, you have everyone from every walk of life. And the ground's level once you step up in front of a bunch of people and try to speak. Everybody, everybody deals with the same nerves, everybody deals with the fear. And so you, you all are coming in on an equal plane and you develop a com camaraderie in that. And it's, it's pretty amazing and you, you through that, there's, you end up helping each other with speeches and people will email you a speech, you edit it and send it back. And uh, as far as people around me, coworkers, some of them have joined the club since then. I actually had a guy who was, I gave a speech in Tennessee recently. And afterwards a guy said he was in Toastmasters at his organization, been kind of holding back from joining and he's joining now. The, the networking it gives you and the friendships you build through it are pretty amazing. And it's, it's a very selfless organization, which I think is what's so appealing about it. Well, we encourage any of our fellow employees to join Toastmasters. It's a great group. 
Um, we appreciate um, your representing our chapter on such a na national and then world level. And um, again, your speeches are always inspiring. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Stay tuned for a little known fact about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. One way to stay informed about what's happening in the city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you cannot attend, we broadcast the meetings live right here on GTN, and we also stream the meetings live on the city's website. Council meetings take place at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesdays of the month on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. The first meeting of the month includes public comments and special presentations. Meetings on the third Tuesday of the month focus on public hearings and city business. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. Greensboro City Council approved a contract with Housing Consultants Group to provide counseling services to help families become homeowners as well as assist existing homeowners with maintaining their homes. Housing Consultants Group is a member of the Housing Hub. Along with the city, the agency will provide home buyer education, counseling before and after the purchase, foreclosure mitigation, and homeowner maintenance education. Home buyer education and pre-purchase counseling are requirements of the city's Housing Connect GSO program. Housing Connect GSO launched in June 2018 and links home buyers, homeowners, and the city's partners through education, counseling, financial assistance, and collaborations to ensure successful home ownership. The program also includes revised down payment and closing cost assistance for first-time home buyers and those who want to purchase a home in a redevelopment area within the city. The counseling contract with Housing Consultants Group will help more residents take advantage of Housing Connect GSO and become homeowners. Housing Consultants Group is approved by the U.S. Housing and Urban Development. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight, but first, Prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hey, this is Taylor. Take a time out from raking the leaves to enjoy these delightful activities. This Friday, head downtown for First Friday. Explore new art exhibits, listen to live music, and dine on delicious food as we celebrate all our amazing city has to offer from 6 to 9 p.m. Learn more at firstfridaygreensboro.org. While you're downtown, take in dinner and a show as the Triad Stage presents the opening night of A Midsummer Night's Dream this Friday starting at 8 p.m. Come celebrate the official unveiling and join the cast and company at the post-show party with food and drink in the lobby. See one of Shakespeare's most popular works. For show times and tickets, visit triadstage.org. Did you know Triad Stage and the Drama Center have teamed up with White and Wood Restaurant and Cafe Europa for a dream discount package? Pick up a discount punch card at any of these four locations to get 15% off for each person. For more information, contact Rosina Whitfield at 336-373-2728. Love yoga? Love your dog? Join Megan Blake and her dog, Super Smiley, for a dog session on the Great Long in Labarra Park on Saturday starting at 3 p.m. Dog yoga is the new goat yoga. Feel free to join the session even if you don't have a dog. Bring your mat, a leash, and get ready for what promises to be one of the most unique yoga experiences in the triad. Visit the Labarra Park Facebook page for more information on dog yoga and all upcoming events. Known as the King of the Rant, Lewis Black uses his trademark style on comedic yelling and animated finger pointing to skewer anything and anyone that gets under his skin. He'll be performing live as part of his The Jokes on Us tour at Cone Denim Entertainment Center this Saturday and Sunday at 7 p.m. To purchase tickets, visit cdecgreensboro.com. 
Don't forget about the 2018 Aki Homecoming concert happening this Saturday night at the Greensboro Coliseum featuring Cardi B and 2 Chains with LMA, Little Baby, and DJ E. Sud. The show starts at 7.30 p.m. Visit GreensboroColiseum.com for more information or to purchase tickets. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here on GTN to find out about more events happening on the town. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has 23 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. Today we place the spotlight on the Field Operations Department. The City's Solid Waste Division is prepared to collect debris in the aftermath of Tropical Storm Michael. Residents with extensive tree damage due to the storm can request assistance by either calling the city's contact center at 336-373-2489 or using the report and issue option on the GSO Collects app. Be sure to include your name, address, and phone number. If you don't have storm debris in need of removal, please continue to gather your yard waste for pickup on your regular trash collection day. The best way to prepare yard waste for collection is to use a 32-gallon trash can. All items should be inside the container. If you don't have a trash can, place the yard waste in heavy-duty clear plastic bags. No other bags will be collected. Tie the bags of the yard waste in bundles not more than 5 feet long. Finally, it's important to note cans, bags, or bundles must not exceed 50 pounds. On the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to the Solid Waste Recycling Division. City staff partnered with students at Greensboro Day School to host a free recycling rodeo. The goal was to collect hard to recycle items that could be dropped off in the school's parking lot. Residents took advantage of this opportunity to shred sensitive documents, dispose of household hazards such as batteries, paints, cleaners, pesticides, fertilizer, and gasoline. The Recycle Rodeo also accepted phones, computers, hard drives, computer monitors, and televisions. The city's recycling education team provided information about proper recycling and waste reduction. To determine if something is household hazardous waste or an electronic item that can be recycled, download the GSO Collects app and access the Waste Wizard search feature. It will tell you which items should be trashed, recycled, or disposed of in a different way. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.